All right, all right, Hustle fam. We are outside, literally. I'm here with my good friend Keith Crystal from StoreMyTruck.com. I feel like I just now drove through Disney Disneyland or Disney World for truckers. Um, just, you know, took a tour of the facility. Before we get into the interview, man, Keith, welcome to Truck and Hustle, man. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you. Glad to be here. For sure. So, you know, we're going to talk about this amazing business that, you, that you've built. You've been in business with Store My Truck for how long? Well, we opened our first one in 2009 in the city of Marietta, Georgia. Okay. So two, since 2009, so that is what, like 15, 15 years? Uh, where, my, where's well, my math? About 14, 14 years. 14 years. 14 yeah. years. Uh, and you, you're an entrepreneur, serial entrepreneur. You have multiple businesses, multiple businesses inside this uh, compound itself. So I want to kind of get into that uh and and you know just get into your origin story as an entrepreneur sure so first just to put some context around what store my truck is just kind of give us a little bit of background ar around that and then we'll kind of get into your story uh how, how we got here well store my truck is a great place for truckers to have a safe place to park their equipment uh truckers drive these 150 200 000 rigs and they want a place that they can put it where the homeowners associations and the people that regulate truck trucks where you park them will leave them alone. This is a great place to park it, a uh, safe place to park it, where it's completely fenced, completely safe with security officers watching and protecting you. Got it. And we have we, we, we're live, so you're going to see the trucks going, you know, back and forth as we continue this interview. So basically, t tell me about the the uh, origin story. Why did you, how, how did this whole thing get created, man? Tell me about that. Well, I was a automobile dealer for many years in Atlanta. 35 years I was a car dealer. We had a location in Marietta, Georgia. And next door to the facility was an open lot. And it stayed open for some time. And we decided we were going to open it up for some sort of storage, outdoor storage. We put an ad in on Craigslist actually uh, to uh, allow for parking. And that was the first one. This was your car dealership? Yes, uh -huh. we had about 15 car dealerships. At the time. How'd you get into becoming a car dealer? I was straight out of college selling cars. Actually, I sold my first car when I was 14 years old. I couldn't even drive it. <laughs> I uh, had a neighbor that had a car that was kind of beat up. I took it, fixed it up, had it painted, sold it for some real money and I was hooked at that moment. Got it. And then what, when, what age were you when you started your own dealership? So straight out of college, I was in University of Georgia. Straight out of college, I opened my first dealership in Alpharetta, Georgia, near my home. Uh, that was the first one. And we ended up opening about 15. We were all over the Atlanta market. I'm used to opening and operating multi-units. I'm used to operating more than just one location. How how'd you get the startup capital to do that at such a young age? Uh, I think that first car... <laughs> Uh, allowed me to buy that first car and sell it, make a profit, turn that money into more money and buy two cars. And eventually I, out of college, had enough money to open my first dealership. Got it. So you like flip, flipping cars, basically. I did. Open your first dealership. And obviously you were successful. You were able to open up how many? 15? Opened 15 over the years. 15 dealerships. What was the name of those dealerships? Oh, the first one was called uh, Precision Motor Company. The other one was called, next one was called Alpharetta Motor Company. Uh, we had, we were the first electric car dealer in Atlanta. Uh, it was called Wego. Georgia Wego was, uh, an electric car that we brought in, in the Marietta area. That actually was the first place that we had a storage lot was right next door, right next door to Georgia Wego. Okay. What was it? A profitable business? It was great. Yeah. Loved it. Uh, loved being a car dealer for many, many years. Uh, we were a dealership that our public could trust. We were going to sell them a good product at the right price. And so we, we were a hit. Got it. So then you realize that you have this additional space uh, on one of the dealerships and you have nothing to do with it. No, well, nothing to do with it. So correct. T t get so back into the story where we left off. One day I'm just thinking, what should I do with it? And I put an ad on Craigslist that said, you know, that we were going to store RVs and boats because we were not far from Lake Altoona. And so we uh, put an ad in and we started getting calls right away. We filled that lot up in about, uh, I'd say maybe two months with RVs, boats, and a few trucks. During that time, I was getting a lot of calls for tractor trailers, uh, box trucks, and 
So eventually I started looking around for a much larger piece of property and opened up another one in Marietta after going through all the hassle of city council, uh, dealing with all of the laws for storage, all the zoning. That's what's the difficulty in opening these is zoning laws. And eventually we opened our second one up and uh, it was full in just a short amount of time. Been opening them ever since. Mm. I think we're up to about 76 locations now. So you have 76 locations. Now these locations are all independently owned and op operated like in individual formed or they all under the store my truck umbrella? So all of them are owned by, by me. It's family owned. My oldest son and my oldest daughter help operate store my truck. Uh, we've opened every one of them one at a time. Uh, and we've done everything to them. We fence them, we gravel them. We go from the floor, the dirt, the trees, all the way up to a finished product with lights, security. And, uh, and we set these up for the trucker in mind where it's a comfortable uh, place for them to come put their high dollar equipment and be safe and be, feel secure about it. Got it. Take me back to the, the, first, the first one you guys built because you mentioned that there was a lot of challenges in terms of like zoning and just tell me back to those challenges that you kind of face and just that story of opening that first location. This is a business that municipalities and cities, counties don't particularly like. Uh, Why? They just don't like trucks being parked all together in one spot. They, they don't think about the trucker. Now, some municipalities currently are starting to accept that this is a important part of trucking for a place to for the trucker to park his equipment however traditionally they didn't zone for it and some municipalities even today do not have any zoning for truck parking and so therefore you have to go in front of city council go in front of planning and zoning and go through a lot of drawings uh, site preparations uh, surveys and zoning applications to get these open. It's not an easy thing. It's very difficult. Got it. How, how is, it, is it costly as well? Is it more so just like the permits and getting approvals? It is costly. It's costly to uh, just to get an engineer to draw your drawings for that location, your elevations, your land disturbance permits, if they're a brand new site. It's all an expense and it takes a lot of time and effort. Uh, there are some of our lots that we've opened. Took us up to four years to open. Got it. So that's like if you're an erecting a site from like from you know just brand new, nothing's been there before. You have to kind of develop it. So the first the first step is getting a rendering of what you want it to look like. Is yes. that the first step? Yes. And some properties are are repurposing, like this property here that we're here at was never a truck parking lot. It was a fueling station and repair station for a large trucking company at some point. And it's repurposed now to be truck parking. And also ha it has a lot of services here for truckers to be able to get tires and body work, uh, repairs, diesel work. And so that's all here at this site. Yeah, and, and we walk through and we'll talk about all the different uh, things that you can do in here. Cause just at face value, you never know all the different things that are in this place, right? And we'll talk about all that. I just want to kind of st stay with the, the process of getting things open. So yes. you started with the rendering, right? That That's one thing. So you have to pretty much draw out what you want things to look like. Then you have to take that before who? What, what's the next step? So after going through planning and zoning, sometimes you have to go into a rezoning property or sometimes there's no zoning available for truck parking at all. Some municipalities don't allow any truck parking. Mm. Some cities don't allow it. I can name one. Uh, Tucker, Georgia, does not allow for truck parking. Okay. So so how do you find, if, if someone were to look to open a truck parking facility, where would how would they find which, which places don't allow it and which places do? Just have to start with finding the property first. Okay. And then going to the municipality and seeing whether or not it's going to be allowed. Okay. Got it. Once you take that to the facility, so, so they're either going to give you the, the thumbs up or the thumbs down. No, we can redo re this or we can sometimes, zone it. Sometimes they make you do different things. They want, uh, they want drawings for the detention pond. They want drawings where the fences are. Some of the municipalities require certain setbacks between other zoning places. For example, if you're building on top of uh, a residential area or 
or or next door to a commercial area because these mostly take heavy industrial it's going to take certain amount of setback and that's all uh, required in that zoning ordinance some of them might be 100 feet some of them might be 150 some of them could be 500 feet setback between zoning uses got it so now in terms of the the cost for this initial the initial paperwork is that based on the amount of space that you're getting zoned or is it just there is no a, there's it, no set amount it doesn't okay there's no set amount i mean each drawing is going to be different uh, some engineers you have to you work with certain engineers in certain cities they're all going to be, it's all going to be different okay and then you've got different different variables of of uh, compactions and different ratios what's the compaction compaction is how much gravel or or uh, millings or the compaction ratio is how hard it is for a truck to be able to drive on it okay so that's like a test that they have to do or something yeah there are some compaction tests yes okay got it so if if it's not if it doesn't meet the standard of the test there's work you have to do in order to get it there always work to do on these properties <laughs> And, okay. and you never know what you're going to get into. Okay, got it. So the w this wasn't the first space, right? No, this was uh, this was probably about our fiftieth location. Fiftieth location. Okay, tell me about some of the locations that you have throughout the country, just to you know put it in context. Well, this is one of the few that is uh, paved, so there was no compaction problem, and this location has been used for this purpose for some time, uh, as far as having trucks on it, and it's zoning heavy industrial has been on this property since birth. But there are properties that we have taken on that had to be changed from commercial or or light industrial in order for it to work. Okay, got it. So after you do the zoning, what's the next step? After you work through zoning has a lot of times to do with how you how you created the site. Once you've uh, gotten the gravel and the fencing and everything. Then you have to go and get your license to be able to open your business license. Then you have to go out and uh, find uh, your clients. Okay. So just basically, once you once you're zoned, you're pretty much good to go. After that, it's just a matter of getting your business license, forming the LLC, or however you decide to form your business, and then it's a matter of just marketing. Well, that that's true, but listen. Just because you open up a truck lot doesn't mean they're coming. Right. Uh, it takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of different things. For example, people find us very easily uh, through the internet. People are able to type in truck parking in Atlanta or truck parking in Indianapolis or truck parking in Birmingham. And they're going to find us. They're going to find us because we're going to pop up. Right. SEO. A, a lot of SEO, like Google SEO and search optimization and so forth. That's correct. Making sure you guys show up first. Let's talk about, you know, building one of these facilities from the ground up. Sure. You know, you you, you talked about you find a place, you, you find a location that you like. This place doesn't have, it's nothing like what it looks like when you're done. So let's talk about that, that process from the inception or the conception of the idea, right? Why you pick a certain facility to how you start to build that facility to turn it into what it looks like today so in a lot of cases we pick locations in a lot of cases we pick locations that are just scrub trees or already cleared with weeds and and brush just grown we go in with our skid steers and our grinders and we clean the lot up we grind everything down we we uh smooth it all the way out we then go right into putting down a base then some gravel and millings, and uh, and we smooth it all out. And then we actually put lines there so the trucks know exactly where to park. We put fencing up. It is always six-foot fencing with two strands or three strands of barbed wire on top. Uh, we a lot of times will do an outer fence with electric electricity, 7,000 volts electricity so people are not breaking in. We also put Georgia Power lights out there, which is nice and bright electronic gates where they're able to punch in a code and come in. That's the lowest security. We hand out new security codes every single time they come in. Or in this particular case, at this location, they're checking people in and checking people out by their driver's license and making sure that they're they're safe. So that's the entrance. 
that how, they go in. And, and how long does that process take for you to build? Like, how long did this facility take to build? It was probably six months to a year to build this facility. Okay. Okay, got it. And just talk about the different uh, the different things that you have here at this facility because there's tons of different, uh, you know, uh, features in this facility. Just talk about this some is, of those features. This is not your average truck parking facility. This has so much more than than most. It's located in south of Atlanta, just south of Atlanta, five minutes from the airport. It is a facility that has, number one, it has the most awesome showers you can ever imagine. The showers here are nicer than the nicest Hilton hotel than you've ever stayed in. <laughs> uh, ceiling to floor tile, uh, 2024, 23 uh, bowls to wash your hands in. The showers are 12 foot by 12 foot with a seating area in each shower. Uh, just a very, very unique restroom. Uh, somebody could come in and take a shower here. It costs $12.50. That comes with every single amenity you could want. Shaving cream, shaver, toothbrush, toothpaste, soap, washcloth, shower, uh, towel, anything and everything that you need to be in that shower flip-flops <laughs> you get to go take that $12.50 shower and you can stay in there for an hour or however long it takes you to, to wash yourself off. It's just a unique way whereas when you go into a truck stop you got 15 minutes to take a shower and they want you in and out because they got somebody waiting right the next feature that's different about this location than anywhere else is it has bunk rooms a bunk room is when a driver comes in their eld has gone off that their electronic logging device has gone off they need a place to park and get off the road they can come here they can rent a bunk room here. It's it's forty five dollars a night. It includes their night of parking, which is thirty five dollars for a twenty four hour of parking. They can come in and use the facilities. Uh, it comes with a shower also, so it's all inclusive. Uh, the bunk rooms are very nice, nicely put together with a uh, bed. It has a Refrigerator has internet, computer, uh, table to eat at, just a nice little room to be able to get off the road and relax. The next feature that, that's here is all of the repair shops that are here. A trucker can get his diesel engine fixed, his def is not working, or he has a problem with his starter. He could get it fixed right here. Uh, there's also a paint shop here. Paint shop can do any body work and repair work that they need. There's also a fantastic tire shop here, which allows someone to get their tires put on their trailer or truck. There's a trailer shop here. There's also a, a setup for customers to come in and use office space. There's mailboxes here. They could get their permanent mailing address and their mailing can all their mail could come here and they can pick up their mail when they get off the road. There's just a lot of features here. The, then finally, if you just want to hang out, there's a fantastic vending area. There's a terrific internet cafe and the driver's lounge has everything you can imagine. There's six TVs in there, air conditioning and heat. It's got everything, even including a ping pong table. So the, there's so many features here that they can enjoy. Uh, there's also car lockers. They can lock their personal car up in a locker. It allows it to be safe where no one's going to bother their car. It's the only item in that fenced-in small area. It's just a great facility for truckers to come in for the weekend, park their tractor trailer with live security, two or three security guards at all times, getting their truck checked in and checked out and a safe place with plenty of lighting plenty of security it's just a great place got it now does the, all the different you know businesses like the the uh the uh, the tire company and and the diesel mechanic is that all owned and operated by store my truck as well it is you, not okay how, how did you go about doing that well all of the bays here there's 21 bays of repairs are owned and operated by independents. 
These are all independent entrepreneurs that want to run their business. And they're running their business with people that are parking here. So you're doing business with the highest of quality of people that we've checked out thoroughly. And you can get tires at a reasonable price. You can get body work done at a fair price. These entrepreneurs here know what they're doing. They do a phenomenal job. Yeah, so so basically they have the the they're, they're blessed to have that traffic, right? They don't have to find customers. The customers are here already. <laughs> right? That is correct. And they know they're here. When right. they pull in, they can see their signs. They're, uh, they walk up and talk to these repair shops and get their work done. Got it. No, that's definitely an awesome opportunity. So you talked about how you guys um, differentiate from like the loves and, and other truck stops out there. How, how intentional are you about making yourselves different from those other? So Love's Truck Stop is a place where you would come in for a day or so, get off the road, uh, get your fuel there, and, and you'll stay there a short amount of time. A lot of our customers are coming in monthly and staying the whole month. They are able to bring their truck in, pick up their car that's on the property, and drive themselves home. They don't have to have their wife come and get them. They don't have to Uber home. Their car is here in a safe environment with security guards watching their personal vehicles. Yeah. They come home they come home every other weekend or every weekend or once a month and their personal items are here safe. Got it. Do you guys have like a subscription model or anything for these guys or is it kind of like they just pay as like a la carte whatever services you want? So we have a great program where you can call up if you're wanting to do daily parking at our 76 locations, store my truck will allow you to go to storemytruck.com mm -hmm. and fill out a daily parking agreement. And another thing that's different about Love's Truck Stop is their time is you got to be in by four o'clock and you got to be out by 10 o'clock in the morning, like a Airbnb or a hotel. We're exactly the opposite. You come in anytime you want, Stay for 24 full hours for a one day of parking. Mm. Uh, another thing that makes us different than them is we allow monthly parking. Loves doesn't have monthly parking. They don't allow you to park your personal vehicle on the lot. We allow, that's what we're a model of. You bring your personal vehicle in, you leave it here for a month or three weeks or two days or whatever you're going to leave it and take your truck or move, move your truck and your vehicle in tandem where you're moving one in and one out in that same spot. Got it. You said you have over 70 locations now, right? 76, 76 yes, locations. Can you name some of the places where those locations are? Oh, absolutely. Are? We just opened our latest one was in Oklahoma City. We just put the fencing up. We're about to put the gravel down. Oklahoma City. We're in uh, Irving, Texas. Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas. We're in Birmingham, Alabama, Bessemer. We're in uh, North Carolina and Charlotte. We're in... High Point, North Carolina. We have a couple locations in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. We're in Anderson, South Carolina. Williamson, South Carolina. Orangeburg, South Carolina. We're in Lebanon, Indianapolis, Indiana. We're opening these up as quickly as we can in areas that desperately need them. But our mainstay and our main hub is Atlanta. There's about 55 sites here in Atlanta. We even have a site in downtown Atlanta. Mm. How were you able to pull that off? It was difficult. <laughs> Took us a while. Uh, we're in Jonesboro, just south of Atlanta. We're in Macon, Georgia. We're in Douglasville, Georgia. We're in Lithonia, Georgia. We're in Stonecrest, Georgia. We're in Norcross, Georgia. We're in every part, every suburb of Atlanta, Adairsville, Kennesaw, Marietta, Smyrna, Mableton. Atlanta is a market that has traditionally been hard to find truck parking. And because I live here, it was easy for me to find the right locations for truckers to have a good, safe place to park. We are here live at OTR Solutions HQ. I'm here with my partner, Jonathan, man, listen, factoring is an integral part of the transportation industry. Why is factoring important? Absolutely, Ramel. In this economy, in this market, cash flow is king. Cash flow is the key to growth. 
If you have a young trucking company or if you've been in the industry for years and you want to take that business to the next level, we're absolutely a company that can help. You know, we're a factor and provider that was born in trucking. So that's all we do. We focus, live, breathe the trucking industry. We offer fuel card solutions, freight through our partners at DAT, insurance, really any need that you have, we should have a solution to help you with it. So I hope you'll give us a call today. Let us know what we can do to help you out. Get the rest and roll with the best. Let's go. Tutorial managers. Okay. It's also a family owned business. When I said it's like a family, it's also a family owned business. My daughter and my son, my oldest children, work in the company and they, uh, they manage it and supervise and check every site. Truck parking traditionally has not been a clean business. Traditionally, you drive into a lot and it's messy. Pallets laying around, uh, urination bottles laying around, uh, junk laying around where the truckers have traditionally just thrown it out on the ground. We are exactly the opposite. We look at our lots every single day. We have a landscape department. We have a cleanliness department. We have uh, dumpsters at all our facilities. We have porta potties at all our facilities. Even though we have uh, showers and beautiful bathrooms here at the facility, we have such a large 29 acre site. We have porta potties at the farthest most part of the lot. We have the truckers in mind. And I think that's one of the things that separates us. And our facilities are clean, neat, orderly, organized, and we check them every day. Got it. As, as we go into the future, are you thinking about any types of different automations to help you automate this process? You know, like maybe like more contactless. Um, what, what's your thoughts about you know, as we move into the future and just- well, We are working on some innovative ideas. Uh, one of our latest innovative idea is a application where the trucker does not have to go on his phone. He'll be able to just push a button and make a make a request to park. Currently, uh, like an app or like an SMS text it's, message. It's a, it would be an app that okay. would allow them into our gates based on their payments. Okay, we're right in the middle of that. Okay, got it. So they would be able to kind of go there. There'd still be a check in check out process, right? Security and so forth. Yes, and just so you know, we also have a full auditing department that goes on our lots every day. Even if there's not a security guard at the at one of the locations that you choose. There's an auditor that's in that lot every day or two, checking to make sure that everybody's parked safely and neatly and that they're supposed to be there. Right. Got it. it. How much does it cost to, to park? So our lo least expensive location is $15 per night for 24 hours. And our uh, it goes up to the more secure locations like this that is $30. Okay. And how does that... How does that uh compared to some of the other truck parking facilities that you guys don't, that aren't under your umbrella? So our competitors really watch us. And I would say in the Atlanta market, for example, uh, they're watching us all the time. Every time we go up or down or change pricing, or we give a coupon, like currently we're giving a coupon away uh, at our Brumbley location at, uh, at Union City, we're giving a $25 off a month coupon that's been going on as a promotion for a while. Uh, but no matter where we open, no matter what our prices are, because we're the largest in the industry, we're the largest truck parking company in the United States, and we have more facilities in the Atlanta market, the few remaining truck parking companies in Atlanta, they watch our pricing every day. Mm. Got it, got it, okay. So as you continue to grow, how many truck parking facilities do you want to have? I mean, what's, is, there, is there a cap for you or do you want to just keep on growing? And, so let's just say like? my goal is to have 500 of them. Okay. I want to be in every major city. I want people to be able to find storemytruck.com. We, we would like to be the McDonald's of truck parking. <laughs> so when you want a hamburger, you think of McDonald's or Burger King or Wendy's. When you want to park, I want you to be thinking about storemytruck.com. Got it. Got it. Is this a profitable business? Does well. It does well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a great way to, to start and end that point. <laughs> it, it, it does well. We're getting by. We, we, you're getting by. You're growing and, and, everything's, and everything's looking good for sure. All right, cool. Are there any other uh, areas that you're eyeing right now? You said you want to be all over the country, but what are some interesting areas to you right now? 
We're looking at some other areas in Texas. We'd like to make Texas, the state of Texas, a lot like Georgia and have it very covered up. Uh, San Jose, Houston, uh, we're eyeing Harker Heights, which is a suburb. We're eyeing uh, uh, a lot of major cities in Texas. Okay. Uh, we're eyeing places up north in New Jersey. We're eyeing places uh, in Nashville, Tennessee. We are looking every day. And you can't open these up everywhere The the right now. Uh, the problem that you find is the price per acre, whether you're leasing or owning, keeps you from being able to open these. What is that typically, the price per acre? If you could share that. Um, not really. Just all depends on what the going market is. Based on where but, the location and where you're at? I mean, I'm sure it's kind of like you could probably Google it and figure out if you did, did some research what yeah, the price I, per acre would be. I mean, there's just a certain amount of trucks that will fit on an acre. Yeah. And you have to multiply it out and see if the numbers work. <laughs> Simple math. Got it. Got it. Okay. Um, so you say you're looking to expand into Texas. That That's obviously a thriving market for transportation. So great great place to go for sure and you already got Atlanta on lock so there's nothing else going on here <laughs> you know um all right cool um what else do I want to talk about with this with this facility um as a as a business person you you have a lot of different businesses just entrepreneurial how do you and you're also a baseball coach like how do you like manage your day and just everything that you have going on well as far as baseball is concerned I've been coaching now for almost 30 years I coach uh talented teenagers, 16 and 17 year olds travel ball. Uh, but outside of that, we also own and operate some other businesses that go hand in hand with Store My Truck. Another company that we own and operate is uh, called Atlanta CDL Training School. Okay. It evolved also because of truckers needing jobs. Atlanta CDL Training School is a local company that I'm a partner in. Uh, it is right around the corner from here. Uh, trains, drivers, to be drivers, class A and class B. Atlanta CDL Training School.com is what. Shameless plug. <laughs> absolutely. Is what you can go to to find out uh, where you can get training or continuing education for drivers. This is a phenomenal program that teaches you everything you need to, to know. And it's on one of our truck lots right around the corner from here. And the uh, instructors are just the best also own a number of office buildings in atlanta and that started off with office buildings that were located just like here there's offices upstairs dispatch offices that's how it started and since then we've opened up 20 office buildings around in the atlanta area we have several in front of our our truck parking lots we have some independent ones like we're in the middle of the marietta square with MarietaOfficeSuites.com. As you'll notice, all my companies have a .com in them. <laughs> I see that. We're in a different world than we were many years ago where you just named your name and you gave your phone number. The .com is where it's at. So MarietaOfficeSuites.com is one of them. AtlantaOfficeSuites.com is another one. Atlanta is a great hub for market for offices, whether it's dispatch, or even salon suites, and we decided to open up those also. We also own a company called HMI Construction. That's the one that does all of our construction repairs, remodeling for all of our lots. They hang all our fencing, do all our gates, and uh, they're a major part of our company. Okay, okay. Multiple businesses. So, um, all right, I'm gonna get off. I just wanna talk to you personally right now because you're obviously like a true businessman. I just I want to understand how you think about business and how you branch out into these different verticals. What's your what's your mindset when you go into a, a different business and how do you go into starting that business? Because you just now mentioned different verticals that are that are kind of you you've managed you you found a way to have them all integrated to kind of support your, each business, right? They all support each other, but they're different. Like you got a security business, right? You have this other business. So tell me about how you think about business and how you start businesses, how you build businesses, because people need to learn from you, like just your mind. And and, and I want to ask you this, do, do, well, your parents entrepreneurs, do you come from any money? So my mom and dad were very poor growing up. Uh, my father owned 
liquor stores, uh, and his family did many, many years. And they were uh, located in college towns. And when I told you that I bought my first car at 14, I was also working for my family in one of our liquor stores, moving around merchandise. So I learned how to work hard at an early age. Uh, when, uh, when I finished at University of Georgia, uh, we had a store there and I was running it, working it and selling cars out in front. So I've always run multiple locations. My family has run multiple locations. We had a store at Georgia Tech. We had a store at Valdosta State. We had a store at Emory. We had many stores open at the same time. So I was used to buying for numerous stores. So the entrepreneurial mind uh, got better and bigger as I got older growing up with my mom and dad. So my father was an entrepreneur, but he started off with nothing. Kind of similar story that I have. Uh, my mind runs all the time. It never stops. So I'm always thinking about how I can better things. As a matter of fact, while we've been sitting here, I uh, came up with a new idea. <laughs> Am I, uh, is Chuck and Hustle going to be a new partner? You know, it could be. You never know. <laughs> okay. But the idea is this. Making sure that your compliance is on point is an integral part of any trucking related business. Today, I stopped by my friends over at Fleet Drive 360 to talk about what they're building to make sure that you can run a successful trucking company. And it's everything from the minute you decide you want to hire somebody through maintaining all of your FMCSA compliance documents for ongoing fleet or, or owner operator truck uh, business. You've got a driver hiring and recruiting module where you'll create driver qualification files, import digital documents. You've got a drug and alcohol module where you can schedule pre-employment drug tests and manage an ongoing testing pool. We've got an accident registry so you can keep your mandated accident logs and even schedule follow-up uh, drug testing for post-crash. We've got vehicle maintenance logs so you can not only maintain the compliance status of your vehicles but also upload your work orders and compliance related documents so you're audit ready when they come in. We've got a document repository, fancy words for digital cloud storage of any document that you want, not just necessarily the compliance documents, anything related to your business, post crash videos, performance evaluations. And then finally, you've got the dashboard and the dashboard is the most important part. You can close your eyes and glance at our dashboard, open them, glance at the dashboard and immediately know whether or not you're compliant or not, both on a driver, company and vehicle level. It's one stop shop for all your compliance needs. What would you put in if you were looking for truck parking in Atlanta? Uh, space to park truck. Okay. Looking to park my truck. Park my truck. Okay. So most people type in truck parking in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And just so happens I own that URL, mm. truckparkinginatlanta.com. So no matter what you put in, you're going to find me. So if I want to find free parking, I might type in freeparking.com or Walmart walmarttruckparking.com or 24-hour truckparkinginatlanta.com. All those names I just named, I own those URLs too. <laughs> so... When you type that in, the first thing you're going to get is the most closest dot com to that name. So now you know a little bit about how you create a brand. I've instructed you how you create a brand that they're going to find. Mm. Traditionally, you found it by popularity. But there is a better way, and that is to match those words that people type in. Mm. Got it. Have you ever taken outside funding or has you, have you bootstrapped everything? So every single growth that I have created has been out of my back pocket. I, Not the front, the back. Uh, out of my wallet. <laughs> <laughs> I have, uh, I funded everything myself. I, uh, my growth is, might be slower than it could have been, but it's all mine. It's all my companies. It's all my people's blood, sweat, and tears. And our sweat equity is huge. Uh, and all of the employees that we have, they totally do everything like they own this business. 
every single employee that works for Store My Truck, you would think they're the owner. They talk to the people like they're the owner. They have complete control. Do you have an exit strategy? Not at this time. Mm. Do you have a number? Somebody came and offered you a certain amount? Or are you just happy with running and operating this business? You know, listen, I like what I'm doing. I like providing a great service for the truckers. They need me. They need the locations. One of the, if not the worst thing about driving a truck or the hardest thing is got to be, where am I going to park my truck? For sure. Where am I going to store my truck? And we solve that problem. All you have to do is go to storemytruck.com and go to storemytruck.com and find out where we are. And if you're going to be traveling anywhere in the Southeast, Texas or Indianapolis, you're going to find a place that's in your route. Yeah. What's the biggest challenge you've had in business? You ever almost went out of business? No. What's the biggest challenge? The biggest challenge, I think, is just continuing to grow and continuing to try to be the best at everything you can do. And how do you do that? Just keep pushing. I keep pushing every day. How hands-on are you with the business? I'm out here every day. Uh, I drive through my lots every day, or I'm running ads, or I'm taking phone calls, or I'm dealing with uh, a complaint here and there, or a problem, or an issue with a gate. Uh, I'm hands-on. My employees and I are on the same level. We work hard together. I don't sit at home. I am out here dealing with customers all day. Got it. What would you say is the most difficult part about running a facility like this? Just staying on top of it. What does that mean? Just just watching to make sure it's clean and neat and orderly. Uh, as far as the people that work for us, that's the easy part. They're all dedicated. I'd say that the hardest thing is just making sure that the facilities are clean and neat and organized. Uh, you know, making sure that the trash cans are dumped, the bathrooms are clean, you know, making sure all the details are right. Yeah. How closely do you watch your competition? You talk about your competition watching you. I look at them every day. <laughs> so every day, my day starts around five o'clock in the morning. The first thing I do in five o'clock in the morning is I'm looking at pricing. I want to see what the pricing is in all my areas. Make sure they haven't changed. And then I run, run pricing coupons and discounts based on where we are. Is your goal to be the most affordable truck parking facility no. or is it to be the most valuable? I want to be where everybody needs to be. Got it. You can't be affordable everywhere. Some properties cost you more. Some things you have no control over. Uh, so as far as being the most affordable, I, I'm going to try to be affordable. I don't know if I'm the most affordable. There's a couple of places in Atlanta that are less expensive than me. But they don't have the security. They don't have certain things that we have. And I think the, it's a better value. This lot here, for example, is $30 more per month than my other lots. But the reason it is, is it's got a lot more amenities. And so, and for $30, it's pretty cheap to be able to come here, park your tractor trailer, get a shower, go sit in the internet cafe, stay overnight to be able to do all the things you need to do for 30 additional dollars is pretty amazing and park on pavement yeah and you said you have a thousand spots right here in this facility there's a thousand a uh, thousand parking spaces at this location uh that are that are available uh right now i think we've got about 60 open spots that's that's pretty good stays pretty full all the time yeah and then during the weekdays today's a wednesday there's more openings today on the weekends it's packed Got it. Uh, and it's easy to get a space. Just go to our website at storemytruck.com. And even if we're parking you on the side, out of a space, in one of the ramps, we're going to find a space for you somewhere on this property. Even when we're full, we're going to find you a place. Got it. Who's your, who's your typical customer? My typical cu customer is the single operator. Uh, owner operator, He's or he's uh, working for a trucking company driving their truck, or 
our customers typically are the onesies and the twosies of truckers. Mm. Trucking companies is just one or two trucks. Do you do you prefer that? Is that or is that just kind of how it has been, and you just have a you know you've embraced it? So most parking lots go after the big companies. Right. They want the CR Englands and the and the uh, JB Hunts. So they don't open it up to the small ones. Right. So we developed this because we thought there was a huge need. And the majority of our truckers, we park nearly 25,000 truckers in all our facilities. The majority of them are independents. Got it. Do you know what your retention is for the guys who come back uh, consistently to your facility? So I would say that probably more than half of our customers are monthly parkers. So they're here every month. Okay. The other half are coming in and out daily. And it's so easy to get a space. If they're on the north side of Atlanta and they would need a place in Adairsville, they go on our website. And in less than three minutes, they have a place to park in Adairsville or Kennesaw or, or Mableton or Jefferson or uh, wherever they want to park. It only takes a second to sign up and park daily or monthly. Right. And you can find all the facilities within the network on the website, correct? And you just like book in real time? Go to our website at storemytruck.com. It takes five minutes to sign up. It asks for your name, your information. It asks for a picture of your truck. Uh, then it gives you a code to the gate, texts you right back with that code. It gives you an account number. The account number, you don't need any kind of hanger to put in your vehicle. Just write it on a piece of paper, stick it on your dashboard. Or on in your window, we know who you are. Got it. So the the spots, I guess, are consistently updated throughout the day in real time. What's available, what's not. How how does that work? So we know how many spots we have at all our locations. For example, this morning we opened up. Uh, we had we have a location at Goodson Road. It's been packed for six months straight. This morning we had an opening, and it went right on our website. And by the end of the day, it'll get filled up. That's Goodson Road there in Fairburn. Got it. Aside from your aside from your your website, you said Google SEO. Where what other places do you guys do marketing? We're everywhere. We're on Facebook Marketplace. We're on Craigslist. We're on uh, Google. We're on uh, anywhere you want to look. If you on the computer, if you type in anything that has to do with an area that we're in, if you want to park in Irving, Texas, if you typed in Irving, Texas truck parking, you're gonna find me. Got it. And you said you're you're the biggest in the country. Yes, for sure. Absolutely. Uh, is there anybody close? I, there's a guy in California that has uh, 22 sites. Okay. Uh, there's a friends? new company that has 20, 29, <laughs> new national company that has 29. Okay. Uh, are you guys? Are, are yeah, you, I know them all. You guys are cool? They all know me. You hang out with each other? Not really, but I mean, <laughs> when I'm at a convention like Freight Waves or somewhere, yeah. they all hear I'm there. Or Freight Fest. Freight Fest, Freight Waves, whatever the name <laughs> of it. They all come over and they, uh, they come and talk to me. They, they want to know. They want to know me. Right. I do some interviews sometimes at some of those places. Uh, I think what makes it unique is that I feel a niche. I feel an, an, an area that everybody needs. If you're a trucker, you got to have a place to park your stuff. And that's what that's why people want to know me. Yeah. It's, it's I mean, I think they said it's like the third biggest problem that truckers face. And according to the ATA is truck parking. I mean, it's one of the major talking points. So the largest problem problem that trucking companies have today is filling their seats in their trucks right their Drivers. second largest problem is finding a place to park whether it's during their eld their electronic logging device says hey you got to go rest they gotta have a place to go yeah most yeah. municipalities today do not want you parking at an exit ramp they do not want you parking in their neighborhood, homeowners association, Walmarts, even Walmarts are getting tighter. They don't want you to park there. So it's getting tighter and tighter and rougher and rougher to find a parking space. And, and I try my best to find these locations that make a great spot for them to park, not far from their home. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you truly have like a forever business. It's a, a moat that's very defensible. That there's like AI can't take away truck parking. Right. That's right. <laughs> so you'll be in business forever for sure. Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. What 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 does keep you up at night? 
if, if there's anything that would would uh, could impact your business, what would that be? Just, I think, load costs, gas prices, insurance, and all the costs that truckers face have to do with their livelihood. So that's what bothers me. Yeah. I, I want them to be able to afford gasoline. They need to be able to afford their their ex- expenses and costs so they can park with me. Yeah. You ever thought about opening up a trucking, trucking company? Since yes. you have all these trucks and w- yes. w- what, what happened? Just thought about it. Just uh, decided that this is the, this is as close to trucking as I want to get. <laughs> got it. Got it. I want to say it in a nice way. So, what what other businesses are on the horizon? What other ideas? You said as we were sitting here talking, you you thought of a, a idea. What what's what's next for you? I mean, as if you don't have enough. Uh, you know, I, there's always something more that I can do. <laughs> right. You said always keep on getting better. Always want more. But uh, the next new idea, you're just going to have to stay tuned and see. I like that. I like that. Okay. Okay. Cool. I just want to go back to building businesses again. When you open up these other businesses, are you opening up with partners or are you opening up by yourself? How do you look at that? Do you find people who operate in a, you know, operate in a certain space and they're, they do good, they, they, they're great at what they do and you say, let me partner with them and let me open up this business or how do you look at that? Or do you want to like open it up and hire people? So we operate these, as you know. Yeah. There are people out there that arrange truck parking. Uh, I am an affiliate and partner in a company called Truck Parking Club. All of my locations are on Truck Parking Club's platform. Truck Parking Club is the Airbnb of truck parking. So if you're outside of my areas, outside of Store My Truck, and you need a place to park, go to truckparkingclub.com. They're in California. I'm not in California, but they are. They can arrange truck parking there and other places around the United States. Yeah. So I, I, I was, I, I was, I mean, that's great too, but I was talking about the other businesses like the diesel mechanic or the security business. Like you mentioned that you partner with Jose for security, right? So like that was something where, you know, you're not a security guy. He's a security guy. So you found somebody that was great at what they do. And then you guys open a business together. Is that kind of like that is correct. the way you kind of think about correct. things? Yes. Okay. Have you ever had any bad partnerships? Oh, sure. Yeah. What happened? They were so bad. I don't want to talk about them. <laughs> I mean, you don't got to you don't got to say the exact name. Everybody, but everybody, that's, that's, just that's for been people to understand what kind of pitfalls there are when you. I get think into I think the best advice I could give you is as soon as you run into a situation where it's not conducive to growth or to doing business, don't try to beat a dead dog. Mm. It's time to move on. Got it. So when you see those signs, it's time to move on. Yep. Exactly. Okay. So you're not going to tell us a you know, it's a real time example. <laughs> I can't tell you that I've been successful with everything I've ever done. I'm, I've had some some downfalls, but you know, for the most part, everything has been pretty good. Got it. Got it. Okay. Um, I think we covered a lot of 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 everything. Quick, did we miss anything? Um, nah. I think we I think we got all. Is there anything else that that you'd want to share about StoreMyTruck.com? you know, the, the other businesses under the umbrella that I didn't ask. I want to make sure I, I want to make sure I capture everything because you have you're one of those guys that every time I ask a question, there's like more. So I feel like I got to I got to keep on pushing to get, you know, get to the really, really good stuff. Not saying that we haven't gotten to some good stuff, but I know there's always like another layer for you. So, you know, I'm just I'm just curious. Is there anything else that I, I, I missed? I mean, we, we covered everything about store my trucks yep. business, how it operates. I think that uh, the only other thing that we did not cover is how people pay for store my truck. We didn't. We we could we let's could talk, talk about, about how easy it is to pay for yeah. Let's talk about a parking that. space. I'm listening. Tell me. So first of all, store my truck has a 24 hour a day answering. That means if you decide you don't want to fill out the paperwork online or you have questions about our paperwork, you can dial six seven eight six three one P A R K. That's Park. 678-631-7275 and get a live person online, you know, on the line that is going to help you fill out your paperwork 
and help you to pay. You can pay us any way you want to, except for cash. You can pay with a check. You can pay with a credit card, which is the way most people pay. You can pay with a debit card. You can pay with your ACH. You can set it up so it comes out of your account every month. You can Venmo. You can pay us any way you want to. Got it. Makes it very simple. Except for EBT. Yes. <laughs> or there's one other way we don't take. Okay. I O U. We don't take an IOU. That's my favorite form of payment, Keith. What do you mean? Well, you know, it's <laughs> our the, least favorite point. It's a good old IOU. <laughs> Can I owe you? <laughs> I like but that. But other than that, we accept payment any way you want to pay us. You can enter your information, and you can set it up on reoccurring, where it will reoccur every month. If you want to stop your reoccurring, or you want to change your credit card, or you want to put in a new expiration date, you could do all of that online. Some people never call us. They just do it all themselves. You can add or subtract units. You can change the type of unit you have online. You can change locations. You can move from Irving, Texas to Atlanta with your truck and never talk to us. Everything is all automated on our website at storemytruck.com. Mm. You, can, uh, you can apply new discounts or new special pricing when you change locations. Uh, and we don't charge a deposit where most places charge a security deposit. We are a unique company that does first and last. That means that when you decide you want to move away from Store My Trucks locations, all you have to do is go to our website and stop it. Stop your reoccurring 30 days in advance, and we're going to apply your last payment to your last month. Mm. So we make it very simple. Got it. Can't get any more simple than that, man. It is simple. That's amazing. That's amazing. So I think we've we've covered. I think we've been running about an hour and some change now, right? We we we've, we've been rocking and rolling. So yeah, we we've covered the business, man. So traditionally on this show, we always close out in two ways. Number one, we have to let people know where they can find you personally and learn more about Store My Truck. I think you've made that very clear throughout this interview where where they can find Store My Truck. StoreMyTruck.com. <laughs> But we'll, we'll, you just did it one final time. But lastly, we always leave with a final thought for entrepreneurs. And it could be spiritual. It could be entrepreneurial. Just be a word of advice. Something that you want to leave our audience with to encourage them in their entrepreneurial uh, journeys. And just, you know, give them a little bit of a, a jewel, man, from you, from your experience. You've been in business for how long? 30 years? 30 plus years? Maybe a little longer than that. Maybe a little shorter now. So, Store My Truck has been in business since 2009. But, but you've been in I've, business for I've been in business since I graduated from school. Right. Got you. So, yeah. What have you learned, man? Give us that last final thought that you would tell people. I, I'd say that the best thing I can tell you is this. Never give up. Never stop. And you can always continue to grow no matter how big you get. No matter how small you are, you can always grow to that next level. Always one last thing yeah, is kind of my feeling and my thought. Grow not only for yourself, but grow for your family. Make them first. Mm, that's right. Do it for your last name. That's what it's all Absolutely. about. I love it. I love it. I love it. Hustle fam. Uh, this has been an amazing episode. I wish you guys were here with me so you could actually check out and tour this facility. I'm sure as we do the interview, we'll be dropping. Well, you know, we would have dropped some of those, you know, uh, shots of the beautiful bathrooms and the, the, the lounge area and all the different spaces in here. It is definitely more than meets the eye. When you come here, you got to check it out. Amazing facility. Congratulations on everything you built, man. And just being in business for so long because that everybody can't you know doesn't have that kind of longevity and stamina so um i look forward to continue continue to watch you and and learn from you and you know seeing what you know maybe you give chuck and hustle some tips and tricks man um so we're gonna get out of here uh hustle fam if you don't respect that your whole perspective is whack if you smell something burning it's only a desire myself keith crystal store my truck.com we are out if you twisted, confused, or stuck about trucks, don't be dumb. This is the place to come. Truck and hustle. Let's go.